Welcome back, fifth grade reading detectives. We are on day two. So um, you are making your way through these um, inferences and conclusions. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. And I am going to share my screen. And so again, remember our learning objective is for this week is that I can make inferences and draw conclusions based on what I already know. So let's think about that. What did we learn yesterday? What I already know is my background knowledge or my experience. And then plus we need the evidence from the text. So we are still working on those clues that uh, authors leave us so that we can help, that will help us read between the lines and make inferences and draw conclusions. All right, so please pull out that handy dandy anchor chart that we worked on yesterday. As you can see, we all need that playbook. And so that is good for you to have as we are going through this lesson so that you can refer back to it just in case you forget. And I know Ms. Holman, I am going to be saying it quite a bit. So I wanna make sure that you have it as well. So let's go ahead and do a quick review of your practice activity for yesterday before we get started. So yesterday, you had the picture of the day activity. So let's see what you figured out. So your observation and what you were supposed to figure out was where are the boys going? So the evidence from the text shows you that first of all, they're wearing the same thing. And so that looks like it's a uniform, pretty much the same thing or close to it. Um, but on top of that, the young men have backpacks. Where do you take backpacks to? So what do you already know? I know I carry a backpack to school. What about you? Or if you don't, you know someone who does. So you can infer that the boys are going to school. The, pic the next picture is a little bit more um, difficult, uh, but not that much. So this picture, there's quite a few dogs and someone walking. And so you have to figure out what the person's occupation is. So of course, this person could be anything, but you usually don't see people having six dogs, not normally. So because the evidence in the graphic uh, picture shows this person walking and they're walking about six dogs, I would think that their occupation is a dog walker. That's one inference. So that's one thing you could, um, you could have inferred from this. I wonder what it was that you thought it could be. Now we're going back to our um, slideshow and we're gonna start up with a warm up activity now that we have looked at the practice. So as I walked in the door, I knew there was trouble right away. The trash can was turned over, papers were everywhere, the sofa cushions were on the floor, one of the pillows had been ripped open, stuffing was all over the floor. As I looked around, I saw Ringo in the corner. He had a ball in his mouth, ready to play. Mmm, what does that mean? So I don't know, what, what could that mean? Who is Ringo and what's happening? So I don't know about you, but when I walk in, I see in this place, there are cushions all over the floor and the cushions have been ripped because it says they've been ripped open and the stuffing's coming out. And Ringo is sitting in the corner, but he has a ball in his mouth and he's ready to play. So that's evidence from my text. Really rich evidence, lots of evidence. So my background experience, I have a dog now. If I turn that way, I am looking at Parker. Um, he is a little chihuahua and sometimes he plays with balls and sometimes he rips things up. So my background knowledge, I have a dog who has done some of the things that Ringo has done. So my inference would be, what or who is Ringo? Ringo is a dog. What about your inference? Do you have any other experiences that would lead you to believe this? And if so, why? So you always have to back it up with why. And the why goes back to the text, all right? The why goes back to the text. So do you have an inference? Go ahead and pause and see if you have a different one. All right, <clears throat> so we are going to go ahead and we are going to 
uh, start jumping into some nonfiction text. Now we started with the pictures. We started with these short snapshot warmups, but now it's time to get our hands dirty and we're going into some text with our reading detective um, caps on and our anchor chart for our playbook and we are ready to dive in. So let's go ahead and start reading Great Wall, Great Jump. First, when you get started, you always want to think about what is this about? So I always look at my, my title. What do I think Great Wall, Great Jump could be? And I file that away. I'm making predictions as I read. Um, great Wall. So it's a big wall. Great jump. Someone's made a huge jump. Don't know what it's about, but we're going to go ahead. So it's this daredevil skateboarder, Danny Way. And just because this is about Danny, I'm going to go ahead and highlight all of Danny. Danny Way knows how to jump into the record books. When Way rode his skateboard over 70 feet wide section of the Great Wall of China, he became the first person to leap over the 2,000 year old wall. Several people have tried to jump the wall using bicycles, but all have failed. The Chinese built the wall to keep invaders out. So this is rich with information. So Wei wrote his um, skateboard over 70 foot wide section of the Great Wall. That's pretty important. So that's probably that wall they were talking about. Um, he was the first human to do this. Um, other people had tried but failed and the Chinese built the wall to keep the invaders out. All right. So Wei made the jump using a mega ramp, so ooh, that seems important, uh, of 65, that was 65 foot high. Wei, who was one of the most famous skateboarders in the world, sped down the ramp and over the wall at blistering speed of 55 miles an hour. So he was going pretty fast, right? So as I'm reading, I'm talking to myself, I'm making connections, like, what must this look like? He's, he is speeding now. He's going fast. I mean, he's leaped this wall with this 2,000-year-old um, wall that's really, really high. And he says, I am aware of the dangers, and my heart was pumping in my chest the whole time. But I managed to pull it off, right? So what does that mean? So he says he's aware of the dangers, and his heart is pumping. So my heart is pumping. What does that mean? Oof. I might be a little nervous, right? But I did it, so I'm excited. So, so then we keep reading. Way soared over the Great Wall and landed on a 100-foot-long curved ramp, although Way botched the landing on his first attempt. What does botched mean? Does anyone want to take a minute and guess or think about it? Let's keep reading, and we're going to file that back. Botched the landing on his first attempt. He went on to successfully complete the, the jump four times. So if he botched the first one, but went on to complete four times, that means he probably didn't make the first one. So botched means he didn't do well on that first one. Okay, all right, so now we're getting that. So we, I think that's important that he botched the landing on his first attempt, right? But successfully, so all of these things that are important, we're gonna highlight. And Ms. Holman's probably highlighted too much. All right, so after the jump, the Chinese Minister of Culture presented Wei with a small gift. So now he gets a gift. All right, so we're gonna do that. I came to China with a goal and that was to jump over the Great Wall, Wei told the reporters. I have accomplished that and I felt like my job is done. I am honored to have my visions embraced by the people of China. Okay, so he's honored. Why do you think he's honored? So let's look at some questions. The decision that probably helped Danny succeed where others failed was the gravity defying spins, the use of a high ramp and skateboard, the use of a bicycle. So let's go back to the text because remember evidence important is important. So did he use a skate? Did he use, let's see, the evidence of a bicycle, I'm sorry. So C was the use of a bicycle. It says several people have tried to jump the wall using a bicycle, but all fail. So that can't be the answer. So if C is not the answer, D can't because it can't be all of the above. So it did say he did some gra gravity defying spins, but the decision that probably helped him succeed, 
other people use the bicycle, what did he use? He used the ramp and he used the skateboard. So our answer would be B. That would be my inference. And remember, as detectives, we went back to the text to help us in our own experiences. So the arrangement of ramps on both sides of the Great Wall must have looked somewhat like, but let's go back and look at what it says. So it says there was this mega ramp that was six feet high and it is 70 feet wide and he is coming down the ramp at 55 miles an hour, which is fast. What does that seem like to me? My experiences, and I'm going to tell you, I'm a little bit of a scaredy cat, but that sounds to me, does it sound like a bridge? Nah. A railroad crossing? No. Not a parking lot, but it sounds like a roller coaster. I would get scared about that, but it does sound like that, and that's what our experience is. If you've can, been to King's Dominion, you know they have those roller coasters that go really, really high, and then drop, drop. So that's where that is. When Way says, I managed to pull it off, he means what? And we talked about this earlier. Pulled a muscle, tricked everyone, was successful, or was able to pull the skateboard off the wall. He was successful, right? He did something no one else did. So when he said, I was nervous, remember, let's go back to the text. He said, I was aware of the dangers and my heart was jumping. We talked about how when your heart's jumping, but you're aware of the dangers, you're probably a little nervous, but I managed to pull it off. And what did it say in the very first paragraph? He was the first human to do it. And finally, Danny has a lot of determination. That is clear from, he hit his feet, he hit his feet in spite of fear. I'm sorry, he did his feet in spite of fear. So feet is the action of actually going over the wall. So he did it in, in spite of being a little bit fe fearful and knowing the dangers. He tried something everyone else had failed. Well, we know that. It says that in the first paragraph. He kept it at it in spite of an imperfect first attempt. So remember, that's where we talked about botch. He botched the first time, but he kept going, and he had successful jumps after that. So this one would be all of the above. And then why does Wei, why is he honored by the people of China? Well, they embraced his vision. They gave him a chunk of the wall itself. So there's a couple of just uh, evidence pieces in the text that help us uh, figure that out. So we finished Great Wall Jump and we were able to use our detective um, hats to help us. So you're going to need, uh, you're going to continue to need your supplies for your pen or your pencil and crayon. When we do things like that, just like I did use my highlighter, when you go to your practice activity, I want to make sure that either you have a highlighter or crayon if you have the text, and if you don't, that you can make notes off to the side with your pen and pencil. So make sure just like our handy dandy playbook of an anchor chart, you keep your supplies with you. But going back to Great Wall, Great Jump, Way was pretty cool, right? He used a skateboard. He did something no one else has done. Despite being um, fearful, he did it anyway. So you can infer a lot from that. So in wrapping up today, what did we learn? What are three things you already knew from this lesson? What are two things you learned during this lesson and one thing you're interested in looking in further? So if I would say three things that I already knew, I knew about, um, I knew about making inferences and drawing conclusions because we've talked about that. I knew that my experiences matter. And then I also knew that I have to be a detective and read between the lines. And what are two things I learned during this lesson? Well, I learned about Way and his determination, but I also learned about how to stop and highlight and read between the lines when I'm looking at a piece of text. And what's one thing I'm interested in looking into further? Just continuing to use my detective cap to um, make inferences and draw conclusions. So with your pen and pencil, I wanna make sure you do the three, two, one activity as well. Continue to remember our learning target this week. I can make inferences and draw conclusions based on what I already know. And that's my background knowledge and evidence from the text or picture. 
And before you go, I want to go ahead and make sure we go over your practice activity. So we did a non-section or informational test during the lesson, but for homework, I'm switching it up just a tad bit. And we're going to do a different type of text. So we are going to pull that up. And let you see that. And while that's going, you can go ahead and go ahead and do your three to one activity. What are the three things you already knew before the lesson? What are two things that you've learned? And go from there. And if this does not come up, it's absolutely okay because the activity is there and we will review it tomorrow. So just go ahead and go to the activity on your practice section and make sure that you go ahead and participate and then we will review this activity tomorrow when you get back. And I am looking forward to seeing you again tomorrow. Have a great rest of your day.